Hey, hey, friends. It's me, Melody Ginger. That was an exciting interlude, wasn't it? I got naked. <laughs> anyway, here we go. A bottle of bourbon. A glass of bourbon. As I said, there's nothing like a good glass of bourbon, and this is nothing like a good glass of bourbon. This is Heaven Hill. This is like $9 bourbon from the liquor store. I bought it to make cocktails over the, the Christmas period. Unfortunately, I'm out of bourbon. I haven't bought any more. It's not that bad, though. You know, get some sour mash, pour it through charcoal, generally tastes pretty good. So, um, I keep alluding to something these last few days. Um, you know, how like life is going great, except there's this big thing going on and I haven't spoken about it. And I've been kind of cagey about speaking about it. It's not something I like to put on Facebook or things, but then you think about it. Uh, no offense, who actually watches my YouTube channel? Yeah, Dan and Jay and FJ, and that's probably about it. Uh, so, why don't I talk about it? Well, my friends, the reason I've had a weird week is because last Friday I found out that my brother died. Um, I hadn't spoke to my brother in about two years. In fact, it was almost two years to the day. And then somebody I'd never spoken to before messaged me on Facebook and said, give me a call, it's about your brother. I called them up and they said, I'm sorry, your brother is dead. Uh, and apparently he'd been found in his flat in Oxford in England and he'd been there for six weeks, dead. Um, it was it was a big shock. I don't know, it, what can I say? I can say I wasn't close to my brother and that's absolutely true. I hadn't spoken to my brother in two years, that was his choice. Um, but also, my brother has been a huge influence on me my entire life. Because, you know, he was nearly ten years older than me. Well, eight or nine years older than me. And uh, when I was a kid, he was the coolest guy in the world. Like, he played Dungeons and Dragons, and he had a leather jacket with tassels. And he went to boarding school, and every time he used to come back from boarding school, I used to give him a big hug, and uh, you could just... Like, even now, a leather jacket with, like, nicotine and cigarettes just instantly takes me back to being, like, seven or eight years old and hugging my brother. Um, he was the biggest Bon Jovi fan in the world. And it's weird. Here I live in New Jersey, where Bon Jovi is, is like, oxygen here. And every time I hear a Bon Jovi song, I think of him. Um, and he was crazy into old books. Uh, and, you know... I'm not quite quite in that that same sphere as him, but I mean, I collect books. I collect my stupid spy books and things like that, and it's, it's weird. I remember, I remember one time, the last time I was speaking to him before we stopped talking was, uh, it was a long time ago, it was 2012, May 2012, I'd say. I was working in Manhattan for a, a big travel brand and my brother went on about he wanted to see Grand Central Station and I was like you know what I'll go midtown Grand Central Station isn't that far away so during my lunch break I walked up to Grand Central Station past Bryant Park and I, I don't know if you've never been to Grand Central Station in New York it's weird I'm not a religious person but it is it is like a it is like a cathedral to me um, and it's literally like a cathedral. You walk in, it has these towering huge windows and things like that. So I took photos of it and walked through. It's funny, these days with all the skyscrapers around it, you don't get the same effect. Back in the, the 30s and things when it was built, you had these beams of light that used to shine through. But uh, even in New York, there are places I can't look without thinking about my brother. That's weird, and now he's gone. Uh, so that was rough. That was rough. And it's weird because at the same time, that was, that's, I've never really lost anyone before in my life. Um, so that was rough. But at the same time, here I am at this stage in my life. Excuse my French, but I've been in a fucking rut for, for the last year and I'm finally getting myself back on track and finally getting on the right track. And it's so weird how so much of your life can be going right and at the same time weird things like that can throw up that could be so, so wrong. 
So it's been an interesting time. Anyway. When I found out about my brother dying, I thought about the last time I saw him. It was in Oxford. And I went up for the day just to see him. Uh, we hung out. And this was, this was 11 years ago. The last time I actually physically saw him. Um, I went to a cocktail bar on Park End Avenue. Uh, and I had a martini cocktail. And it was interesting because that was the first time I'd ever had an actual proper martini in England that wasn't from the Dorchester. Because England's very far behind. You can go to any dive bar in America and get a world-class martini. In England, you say, can I have a martini? And they'll pour you like martini um, vermouth into a glass and stick an ice cube in it. So anyway, he and I were at this, this place, had a, a martini cocktail, proper martini cocktail, and it was four out of 10. It's fine. The day I found out, I went to Longhorns with my friends here and I had a martini cocktail and it was world class because this is America. But it was nice. I was sitting there having a, a cocktail with my wife and uh, my buddies Brandon and Mark and it, it felt sad because I was sitting there with my beautiful wife and two awesome friends in a fantastic bar in the city that I had spent my whole life dreaming of living in. I was literally living my dreams and my poor brother had flushes down the toilet. Oh, I don't know. He'd never achieved his. So bad. He... It's weird. Uh, this video is going on a really long time. I am aware of that. So I apologize. But I just want to say my job, I work in a pharma company um, and I've been doing a lot of interviews with people about uh, their careers. And so many of these people are like, oh yeah, I studied biochemistry and then became, bio, became biochemist and worked for this pharma company. My brother studied biochemistry at Newcastle University. And it's weird because I interview these people every single day at my job and I'm like, that could have been him. That could have been him. He had a degree in biochemistry. Should have become a chemist, become an analyst. And you know, worked in, in pharmaceutical manufacturing and... <sighs> I'm very much one for following your dreams. Absolutely. But at the same time, I'm also pragmatic and it's just, it's just weird. Every single day I'm, I meet people who are living the life that he could have had and he didn't. And in some ways he had a cool life. In some ways because he gave up biochemistry and became an English teacher abroad and he went and lived in Poland and Hungary, and Paris, he was down and out living homeless in Paris. I mean, those are amazing stories. Amazing stories to have in your life, but I don't know. It's very sad. It's very sad, it makes me feel very lucky. Uh, it's difficult because I don't believe in God, so I can't say there, but for the grace of God go I. But, literally, I know he and I were chased by the same demons and I have been very lucky. I have the most amazing, gorgeous, incredible wife in the world. I have three beautiful kids. I have amazing friends. I'm lucky enough to have a, a great job. I live in a beautiful house. I'm literally making my dreams come true with my writing business. I just wish he could have had that. He used to go on to me about all this Hungarian crap. Um, and you wanna know a Hungarian dude? Maslov. Maslow, Maslow, I don't know, but he created this thing called hierarchy of needs. And on top of that is a self-actualization. And then here I am in life. I am I am clawing at self-actualization. And it's just, just sad. My brother was smarter than me. He was more talented than me. He had every advantage in the world. And, and he couldn't climb that triangle. It's sad. 
So I'm sorry. I this video's gone on for ages and I haven't really said anything and I've just been blurting it out. But maybe it's cathartic. I have been sitting here for the last 15 minutes and I haven't even Thank you for listening. I would just say, uh, a quote from a stupid video game. I was obsessed with this video game, Bioshock, for so long. And in it, the character Andrew Ryan was like Howard Hughes meets Anne Rand. He would say, we all make choices, but in the end, it's our choices that make us. That's definitely true in the case of my brother. Uh, I mean, it's true in the case of all of us. So, make smart choices. This world is a wonderful place and we have the amazing gift of being on it. Um, and we all have our challenges to face and our challenges to overcome, but overcome them we can. Think about what it is you want in life and then pursue it. Because no one's going to give it to you. You have to go out and, and chase it. Anyway, okay. 11 minutes of crap. This whole video is going to be like 15 minutes at the end. I apologize for that. Ridiculously long. There we go. Getting back into the old uh, British thing. Look, I'm going to finish my whiskey. I'm going to go. Cheerio. Good night. Thank you for letting me rant. I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.